Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphanine. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate that. And if you could, please click that like button, turn it into a rocket, and send it to the moon. So let's start out with a little bit about MoneyGram and why the MoneyGram merger with Stellar, the Stellar Development Foundation is so good. Uh, and then we're going to get into something I think I found that's very interesting about Visa. All right. So we start here. There's an article on um, ir.moneygram.com and it goes as such. MoneyGram Online also delivered all time highs in cross-border transaction and revenue as well as in digital receives and sends through Visa Direct. Let me say that one more time. All time highs. This is from June the 9th. All time highs. Not, not only in cross-border transactions, transaction volume is huge, okay? Because it raises the average transaction value, the price. It raises the price, okay? Of whatever rail it's utilizing, it's going to raise that price. So high transaction volume is good, and, and they're merging with MoneyGram at, at a point where they're having all-time highs in not only transactions, but revenue, they don't give you a number, a specific number here, but whatever it is, is more than the, uh, was it 40 cents that Stellar is at now? It's much higher than that. So this is a very, very good. Keep in mind, MoneyGram is just one, one financial institution leveraging uh, Stellar, just one, okay? And that's gonna be key when we go into what Visa is saying a little bit later. You definitely wanna catch that. Um, so, all-time highs in both transaction volume and revenue. That's extremely good. The future's looking very bright when it comes to XLM and Stellar. Okay, so now let's go into growth. They experienced this as uh, MGO, which is MoneyGram Online, also delivered all-time highs in, cro uh, in cross-border transaction transactions and revenue, growing 60%. They grew 60%. That's exponential growth. That's very good. That means that Stellar also is going to stand to grow with MoneyGram. And it'll be a symbiotic relationship. MoneyGram will also grow with Stellar. Stellar is just going insane, exploding, doing deals everywhere. Okay. So I just wanted to highlight that the show, this is, a, this is a little bit better than I think people are anticipating. All right. <laughs> Giving them credit for. Muy. Muy lindo, mi gente. So now, and I hope I'm not moving too fast. I'm a little bit excited. That was very, very interesting to read. We're going to keep an eye on that, okay? So now we have uh, uh, something very interesting. If you go to the Stellar's uh, Stellar.org, and it's Stellar for Remittances, there's a little piece they have here, and it says, each year, over $500 billion of value is transferred uh, cross-border through personal remittances. Uh, now, 500, keep that number in mind, $500 billion in value, because we're going to have to extrapolate just a little bit. $500 billion of value. This is what Stellar is saying that uh, uh, is transferred cross-border through personal. Keep that in mind. Look at the verbiage. Personal remittances. That's it. That's all it covers personal remittances. This has nothing to do with financial institutions who are leveraging uh, certain uh, payment services to send uh, money cross-border or banking institutions sending money cross-border. It, it does not account for that. Personal remittances, $500 billion. Okay, why is that important? Because remember I told you there's way more money to be accessed. Let's go to Visa, who is leveraging the Stellar blockchain via Tala. Tala utilizes the Stellar blockchain, XLM, okay, as a rail. Visa is utilizing Tala for their cross-border payments. Let's just take a look. I just wonder, let me scratch my head for a moment. I just wonder how much does Visa think is on the table cumulatively uh, with all cross-border payments? How much do they think that they can, that's available on the market for the taking. Let's take a look. So now I did a lot of research to find this. It, it was pretty difficult in my, for me, okay, to find this. This is a PDF of what Visa is calling 
Visa Inc. 2020 Investor Day. This is segment two. Okay, there's a segment one. I went through that PDF also. It's like 96 pages. I didn't find too much that was interesting. But segment two, you scroll down to page 59. I went through all of these pages uh, just for you. Page 59, there's a little section here and it goes as such. It says, we think about new flows in two broad groups in terms of customers needs and use cases the first one is lower value higher velocity flows that's 60 65 trillion dollars that's all nice and sweet let's get to the cross-border payments in the second category we have higher value lower velocity flows now the two top categories there are uh card based which is 20 trillion dollars okay and which which we all know the cross-border payments and stuff is going to go into the card-based category at some point. If you see all of crypto coming out with their own cards, this is inevitable for XLM and Stellar, I would believe. Someone is going to make a Stellar card, but we'll get to that at another time. The second category here is cross-border. Now, for cross-border revenue, Visa believes that, that it can access $10 trillion dollars. Now, this is just what they believe is on the table that they could scoop up or is available for anybody to scoop up. But of course, they're, this is their PDF. So this is what they believe they can scoop up 10 and access. When I say scoop up, that means access 10 trillion dollars. Let that just sink in for a moment. This is a company that is leveraging Tala. That's I mean, they're utilizing Tala to leverage the Stellar blockchain for their cross-border payments. And they believe that they can access $10 trillion. Now, of course, they might not get the entire $10 trillion. That's not what it means. But even if they got a modicum of $10 trillion, just a, a couple trillion, what does it do to the price of XLM Stellar? What does it do to that price? What, what if, let's just go out on a limb here, okay? Let's have a little bit of fun. What if they actually could access that $10 trillion? Keep in mind again, this is only one company <laughs> that's leveraging uh, Stellar, the, the blockchain, XLM. This is only one company. This doesn't even take into account what MoneyGram brings to the table, what IBM is going to bring to the table with over 150. That And that was a while ago, 150. I'm sure it's closer to 175, 200 at this point. One, over 150, according to them, financial ecosystem partners. And that's not including all of the banks that are separate from IBM, MoneyGram, all the financial institutions separate from IBM, MoneyGram, uh, Visa, there's so many others leveraging Stellar. So what happens to the price of XLM when it's being utilized by all of these financial institutions, all of these banks? And we have, oh, there's so much money that stands to flow into XLM if everything goes according. Of course, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor and uh, anything is possible in life. So there's no guarantees, but we're looking at the data and the data is, unbelievable 10 trillion dollars so we're going back to that first point i was making where stellar is talking about personal remittances 500 billion dollars is just the just for people sending money to other people but when they're talking 10 trillion dollars when visa is telling you that there is 10 trillion dollars that is accessible that is just there for the taking right there i'm, I'm going to believe that they're including not only personal remittances, but remittances by finance, not remittances, but like cross-border payments between financial institutions, B2B, business-to-business -business, uh, 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 transactions, okay? And many others also. I, I won't say put the categories out there, but I believe I know what they want to access. And it's similar to what IBM is doing right now. Who would have ever thought IBM will be connecting banks? Think about it for a moment. And then think about Visa and what their aspirations might be. And why would you not access that? And why would you not encompass that within this 10, tr 10 trillion? That's a lot. That's a exponential uh, amount more uh, money 
than 500 billion for personal remittances. And I would think that's a lot more than what would be available if you only took uh, um, just your lay financial institutions. Of course, it has to be banks as well. So like I said, IBM has their IBM Cloud, IBM Cloud Data Shield, and they're st they still have their IBM Worldwire, which seems like they're taking it and incorporating it into their IBM uh, uh, Cloud, which has their financial and banking uh, uh, sector uh, signing up in mass. Okay, and they're leveraging Stellar technology already, the Stellar blockchain already through their IBM Data Shield. I showed you that document. I, I told you about that in the, one of the previous videos. So if IBM is leveraging Stellar in that way, why wouldn't Visa, a company that's already deep in the financial sectors, why would they not also try to access the banking, uh, the banking sector through cross-border payments and, uh, and just regular payment transactions? Is looking very, very good. This is very interesting. This is a this is an insane uh, um, number <laughs> just for a company to put that out there and say yeah, and and to know that you hold the insanity comes when you think about the fact that you hold some of those rails, and when you have if if you have let's say you had two trillion dollars flowing through any of these protocols, it could be XRP, XLM. Algorand, Cello, it doesn't make a difference. It, especially if you hold all of them, it's sort of like they're all the same to you anyway. You're gonna get the money anyway. If you had $2 trillion flowing through them cumulatively and you held all of these coins, the price, because of the average transaction value and the, and the high volume, and the volume is insane. I had a PDF up here, but I lost it. But the transaction volumes are unbelievable. So when you have a high transaction volume and you have a high tra average transaction value, obviously that raises the price up exponentially. Now, take into account that some people hold a lot of coins, a lot of protocol. So you're holding a ton of XLM possibly, a ton of XRP, and that price is steadily raising. You're making a ton of money. Money, 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 money. I don't know about you. I like money a little bit. Just, just a little bit. I like money just a squint my eye. A little bit. <laughs> but um, so we scroll down a little bit more and so they have another section here and it's titled Unique Solutions Meet the Needs of Higher Value lower velocity flows from commercial clients. Now they have them in the circles, these circles that people have been using lately to show the importance of, um, of these different uh, ideas or, or uh, points that they wanna highlight what's, for what's more important than uh, another thing, right? So data transfer is one of the biggest blurbs. We all know that Stellar is amazing at transferring data, okay? That's why it's ISO 2002 compliant via IBM. Everything at IBM, as I think I covered this, maybe I didn't, but I had a video where I covered, it might not have been released. I had a video where I covered IBM and it, they have a list of all of the, the different uh, compliances that they meet for ISO 2002 certification. So data transfer is up Stellar, Stellar's uh, alley. Then they have another circle down low and this one, it's a respectable circle. It's com complex cross-border payments, which we know that one thing that the banks, according to the Bank of International Settlements, wants to do is simplify cross-border payments via utilizing the multi-central uh, bank digital currency, the MCBDC or the MBDCs, okay? Stellar can take, or XRP Algorand also, they all can do it but we're talking about Stellar here. XLM can take all of that data and the value, easily combine it, uh, transfer it over in a few seconds, and it simplifies the process. So I would think that circle would get a little bit bigger because of the simplification of cross-border payments 
once the system is implemented. Now, of course, systems haven't been implemented yet. They're still working on it. They're still uh, experimenting with it. They have to shear everything up. Then also, along with that, there has to be regulatory clarity. Unfortunately, I know this is silly at, at this point with the SEC, but un unfortunately, companies are going to need regulatory clarity, not just to make sure that they don't run uh, afoul of the SEC and governing bodies, but also so that they're involved in something they know is respectable. Okay, there's no illicit activities or anything like that. So a lot of the crypto industry is gonna have to get cleared out. All of the junk and all of the bad stuff is gonna have to get cleared out before the businesses and banks and everyone else is ready to step in. And once that happens, crypto is gonna go like so parabolic. You won't even, you won't believe how parabolic it's gonna go. All of the big money is still on the side. The, I, I would not tell you a story when I say that the whales, the people you believe are whales now are nothing compared to who's on the sideline, just waiting, salivating at the mouth, drooling to get into the market, but they're gonna wait. There's just too much dirt in the market right now. But once that's cleared out, and that could only be cleared out with regulatory clarity, there's a lot of money that's going to flood into the crypto market. And all of crypto is going to rise for a time, all the respected crypto. Bitcoin is going to rise. Bitcoin is gonna go insane if there's regulatory clarity anytime soon. It's gonna go insane. XLM is gonna go bonkers. XRP Algorand, I'm telling you now, uh, a couple of days back, very quickly, right? A couple of days back, if you paid attention to the charts, and I'm always watching the charts, just like I'm always doing research, you saw, and I have them all together, Algorand, XRP, HBAR, and Cello, all of the banking coins at the same time, while the whole, the, the entirety of the rest of the market was red, all of the banking coins went green and were going up at the same time because large institutions are running that test already uh, where they are, they're going to run money into those protocol because they're all together. They're really all one system. Interoperability is one system, really. Their separation by names and companies is just an illusion. When you're taking into account interoperability, it's all one system. But you saw all of their prices start to go up together. Then they went down together. There's a flow to it, okay? Whether people are using bots or they're paying different accountants and, and financial people to watch the market and invest for them. Whichever way it's happening, everything rose together. This is a sign, in my opinion. This is, and I've seen that happen multiple of times, okay? You have to pay attention to the sign and the, the ebbs and flows of the market. Now, <laughs> when there's regulatory clarity, the market is gonna go insane. So this is one of the reasons why, yes, I'll take profits from SHIB. I, and I actually like SHIB as an ecosystem. They're doing very well. So I'm gonna take profits for a long time when it comes to SHIB. I'm gonna get in and I'm gonna get out. I lost nothing, I gained insane gains. But for a protocol like that, that they don't really have a, a utility other than store of value, yes, I'm gonna take profits. But this is why when it comes to the banking coins, I let them, I leave them alone unless I'm adding to them. I'm just, I'm just constantly adding. If it's a dip, it's the most wonderful thing ever. Because once there is regulatory clarity and, uh, or once the rest of the world, let's say there's not regulatory clarity in the United States, even taking that into account, the rest of the world still isn't ready yet to roll out their systems. Even though they've piloted, they've experimented, they're still running experiments. Like I said, you saw the Bank of International Settlements, they ran three different experiments with XLM, uh, XRP, a whole lot of different protocol. They were congealing them together in their MCBDCs. I already showed you this. This is what they're telling you, multi-blockchain digital currency. So they're not ready yet, even with all of that. But if they were to roll it out before the regulatory clarity, also you're gonna see an insane spike. I don't want to be cut out of any of that. If, uh, when those prices go up, I want every little bit of money I'm going to get from the XLM that I've accumulated, XRP, HBAR, Cello, every little bit. I'm not going to miss anything. And I lose nothing. All the money I've ever put in is nothing that's going to hurt me. And, and I don't believe anybody should invest anything that's going to hurt them out there either. It's not financial advice, not a financial advisor. But there's going to be such a parabolic run that's going to be unbelievable to most people, that's not a joke, in my opinion. Maybe it doesn't happen, but looking at the data, 
I believe is going to happen. And when it happens, oh man, oh man. And also another thing, I hope that everyone is protecting their crypto. A lot of bad parties are going to be trying to take crypto from people, okay? I'm just gonna say it that way, when it goes parabolic, okay? So I, I don't recommend trusting any exchange. I don't trust any exchange. I don't even trust ledgers that have to connect to the internet. I, I keep my stuff air gapped. I mean, it does not touch the internet at all, okay? Uh, until I'm ready to trade it. And that's not going to happen until it go parabolic. And it's only gonna be on for a, a, a few minutes. Boom, 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 get it traded. So, if, even if I sell a little bit, you can sell a little bit. Everybody has a different technique. Sell a little bit at a time, sell half of it, 25%. Who knows? I mean, everyone is different. But my crypto would not touch the internet. Not, would not touch an exchange until it's that time as far as the banking coins to protect them protect them life changing wealth this is not it this is not a game i laugh a lot i joke a lot but even just seeing that the, these numbers 10 trillion dollars listen i hope these words made an impact um even if it doesn't happen, this is one of the most epic and great opportunities ever in life. And it's never going to happen again. There's no other uh, uh, technology that is going to have the banking sector salivating to get a piece of it. No other until it's, until the future takes over. You know, they come out with quantum computing, hash graph or just hash graph, anything that's superior. Of course, that's future technology we're talking about right now. And I believe all of that's just going to be integrated. I believe everything else is just going to be slowly integrated uh, with what exists now. I believe there's going to be a long period where these banking coins, these rails, these technologies, these protocols are going to just continue to expand and evolve. And this is why you see Ripple hiring so many new, new minds to advance the protocol. Uh, you see XLM Stellar Development Foundation hiring so many new minds to advance the protocol. They see the future, they have the vision. Do you see how aggressive they've become? XLM has been aggressive making deals everywhere. XRP has been aggressive making deals everywhere, advertising more than you've ever seen. Cello has been hiring so many new minds. They know what's coming. The legacy system is weak. It's weak and it's time to strike. Well, it's becoming time. It's getting closer and closer as the legacy system is old and sick and broken and banks are looking for something new. You have the Bank of International Settlements pushing for this. Listen, I can't tell anybody what to do. I'm not here to tell people what to do at all. I, I try to share my, my, my zeal, my, my excitement about crypto and what's going on. And also, mostly I'm a researcher and I try to share research. Like I found this document, brought it right to you. Uh, and this was hard to find. But man, oh man. What it's looking like right now, when that when that parabolic run happens, I, I I see it going like this. This is not a joke, and it's not about it being overnight. It's about high transaction volume and high average transaction uh, uh, um, value, volume and value, and that is going to send that price like this. So it might not be, it's not gonna be overnight. I don't think it's gonna be like that, but I think over days, weeks, months, you're gonna just see this continuous rise. That seems logical, doesn't it? Continuous rise. And it's not gonna come back down. It can't come back down. One, if, if any of these institutions utilize the banking coins, the price can't come down for a dip. There's no way. Because this is not like Bitcoin, where there's like people sell off and they just choose to put their money somewhere else. And so the dip remains for a long period of time. This is not like that. We're talking about constant transactions with a high value, a high average value. So that once that price goes up, if it stays anywhere, it's going to stay up high. So there's not going to be room for dips. Companies don't work like that. Banks don't work like that. There's no dip. Every day, people are needing transactions. Every day, people are sending money cross-border. Every day, the banks are sending uh, 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 payments to one another every single day consistently. So keep in mind, these protocols are not like the other crypto. They're nothing like that. And the value that they have are nothing like those things. Don't ever compare them.
And I love, I love Bitcoin, make me some money. Uh, Shiba, it's made me some money. I love them. I hope they keep making me money. I hope they keep making you money. But don't ever compare XLM, XRP, Algorand, Cello, and HBAR to any of those because what they're capable of, whoa, Nelly, $10 trillion in cross-border payments. What happens if they even access a small piece of that? My goodness. My goodness. Listen, I, I know some of you guys are going to celebrate and I, we joke around like that, right? Oh, throw a party. Listen, that much money, listen, that much money, the way that that protocol is going to go, like you hold a whole lot of coins. You've been accumulating every week. That price goes up. It, it doesn't even have to go up that much anymore because so many people hold so many coins. You're going to be so rich. Me? I, shh. I'll be quiet. I'll be real quiet. And a lot of people are going to see me just disappear. I'm still going to make videos here, but I would just get out of the area. People will come looking for you. You're going to have so much money. People are going to come looking for you. You're going to have to get away nice and quiet. A nice beach, white sand beach. By that time, you're probably buying your own beach. You're buying a private beach at that point. That's not a joke. House on a beach. Nice weather. Private plane. Whatever you want. But... Yeah, I, I, the as much money as people stand to make when this goes parabolic from when the banks get activated, when financial institutions like Visa and MoneyGram fully activate and utilize these protocol as rails, that transaction volume and value, my goodness. So I don't want to be too repetitive, but um, I get a little bit excited. Uh, when I'm talking about things like this, but just seeing that amount, just look at that amount cross border, 10 trillion, trillion dollars. And that's not even, listen, that's not even all of it. We did the numbers before. That's not even everything. <sighs> Starting to get serious, everyone. So when you start seeing institutions put out documents like this, this is from 2020. They haven't put out the 2021 yet because I tried to find it. I couldn't find the 2021. But when they start putting out things like this, you start to pay attention because that means they're serious. And they did their research before this came out. This is Visa. They did their research before this came out. You have to take it serious. So listen, <laughs> I'll never stop collecting the banking coins. Precious. You got to be like Golem and Smeagol with these coins. My precious. They're going to protect it and fight to the death for it. But don't, that's not financial advice. <laughs> advice. Don't fight to the death for it. <laughs> so my, oh, I don't want people asking about XRP, XLM, and you, you're whipping out something and you're ready to fight, <laughs> fight to the death. So precious. My precious. That's how I get when I'm, I hear anybody mention those banking coins. Uh-uh. I don't want to discuss that. What about Sheba? <laughs> hey, do you know about XLM, XRP? Huh? What, Sheba, what about she? I don't, don't let people know that, man. You'll be a millionaire, multi-millionaire, billion. Some of you might be, some of you are going to be billionaires. This is not a joke. You're a billionaire and now you're at the same, you're in the same city, same town you were in before. Everybody knows you and you discussed the banking coins with some of these people who are struggling. Remember that too. There's there's a lot of struggling going on, right? We have to go to our businesses. You own a business. I own a business, right? We have to go to our businesses. And the people around us are suffering. They're not living like you and I are living, you know. Now you're a billionaire and they know. when They're going to know because once XLM or XRP or Algorand or Cello or HBAR is making millionaires and billionaires, if it happens, if it, if it happens, okay, the, it's going to hit the news. And once it hits the news, people lose their minds. They lose their minds. So anyway, <laughs> now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the money.